Portions of the following program are transcribed. Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. Is uh, this the Diamond Detective Agency? Well, what does the sign on the door say? Yeah, uh, Diamond Detective Agency. And take a guess. Uh, are you Mr. Richard Diamond? It depends. How much does he owe you? Uh, uh, nothing. You just want to speak to him? I do. You come as a client? Yes, I do. You have a hundred a day in expenses? Yeah, I do. Then I now pronounce this man and client. Your name, please? Uh, my, my name is Thomas Jason. The stockbroker? Well, you better pay cash. Oh, I, I'm retired now, Mr. Diamond. And to end this uh, nonsense, here's your hundred dollars. Oh, thank you. Now, what's your trouble? Uh, it's Carol, uh, my adopted daughter. We adopted her when she was 12, uh, but my wife died shortly after. Frankly... Carol has been trouble ever since. And now? Uh, now, I- I'm afraid it is no longer a matter of delinquency. I, uh, well, there have been several incidents that make me suspect that she's trying to do away with me. Oh, sweet girl. What's her reason? Uh, my money. In my will, she is my only heir. Why not change the will? Uh, I-, I said I suspected her, but I'm not certain, Mr. Diamond. And you understand, it would be terrible to disinherit her if I am wrong about my suspicions. I, I, I simply must be sure before I change my will. She have any idea of your suspicion? Yes, yes, yes. This morning I did speak to her. They mentioned the possibility of cutting her from my will. She flew into a rage, made several terrible threats. Oh, what do you want me to do? Well, sir, I want you to... Oh, excuse me. Diamond Detective Agency, we have the only corpse with a lie-down design. Oh, Rick, why don't you answer the phone right? Okay, Helen, baby. Diamond Detective Agency, Mr. Richard Diamond speaking. What? See, it throws you. Uh, uh, Mr. Diamond. Uh, honey, I'll see you tonight. I got a client. She? He. Good. Bye. Uh, you were saying, Mr. Jason, before I was so nicely interrupted. Yes, I, I want you to either prove my fears to be true or groundless. If I am right, I will change my will, of course. Where do I start? Uh, come to my house at three this afternoon. Here's the address. I'll introduce you to my stepdaughter, Carol, as a business acquaintance. After you've met and talked with her, I'll give you what details I have about her threats and actions. Okay, Mr. Jason, I'll be at your place at three this afternoon. Uh, Good day, Mr. Diamond. I checked the time and found it to be nearly twelve, so I beat it out to grab a bite of food before the noon rush began. Cafes in downtown Manhattan at lunchtime can only be compared to a can of sardines after all their relatives move in. When I had down my daily bread, I went back to the office, did a little washing, and found myself with still time to kill. So being interested in my new client's problems and always liking a clear view of a new case, I dropped in at the 5th Precinct to see what Lieutenant Levison had on the Jason family. When I walked into the squad room, I found Sergeant Otis tilted back in his chair with his number 14s crossed on the desk in front of him. From the sounds he was making, he was either sleeping or gargling with molasses. Sergeant Otis. Oh, boy. Sergeant Otis. Calm down. Otis, wake up. What? Oh. Oh. Oh, it's you, Shamus. Patrol leader Diamond with his stout hearted brownies, who are shocked by your dreams. Shame on you. Hey, how'd you know I was dreaming about a dame? I peeked. You know, I think I'll tell the lieutenant that you were sleeping on the job. Well, oh, oh, no, please don't do that, Shamus. You start me pounding a beat again. Please don't tell him. Well, maybe I'll let you off the hook, but only if you tell Walt we're pals. That might stop him from giving me the devil about ribbing you. Pals? You mean friends? Buddies. Oh, no, I couldn't stand it. Hello, Walt. Okay, so where's the body? Nobody. You lost one? Now you stop that. Well, get you. All bad because I can't find a body for you. Oh, please, Rick. What do you want? I just wanted any dope you might have on the Thomas Jason family. Jason? Yeah, the broker. Oh, oh nothing on him, but plenty on his stepdaughter, Carol. Like what? Oh, she's a regular. Usually D&D, drunk driving, disturbing the peace. You want to see the file? Yeah, it might be worth a look. Uh, 
have my pal Otis bring it in. Sure, up. I... You what? My pal. What did you know? Otis and I are friends. <laughs> Is that why he tries to hide under the desk every time he sees you coming? Call him in. See for yourself. You think I won't? Otis, get the file on Carol Jason. Bring it in here. Uh, yeah, Lieutenant. <laughs> now we'll see. Friend, <laughs> that's a laugh. <laughs> it's a laugh yourself. You better be feeling good. Yeah, what do you mean by that? You'll see. Uh, yeah, Lieutenant. Here's the file. I'll take it, Otis. Thank you very much. Sergeant Otis, you have an opportunity to do me a great favor. Please, and without profanity, tell me what you think of Rick. Oh, he's nice. What? You're turning blue, Walt. I'll turn blue if I want to. What did you do to Otis? Dope him? You heard him. He thinks I'm nice. We're pals, buddies. I heard him all right, but I wouldn't believe it on the stack of police manuals. Otis, I'll give you one chance. What's this all about? The shamus told you, Lieutenant... I think he's a swell, like a great guy. Thank you, Otis, my friend. Uh, always kidding, but a good pal. Otis, do your feet ache? My feet? Why, no, Lieutenant. Well, they will. I'm sending you to a beat. A beat? Yes, in Yonkers. Oh, no! <laughs> I went through the file on Carol Jason and found out Walt hadn't been kidding. She'd been picked up for everything from kicking dogs to slugging her boyfriend with a champagne bottle. Real nice girl. I left Walt trying to third degree the truth out of Otis and headed for what I hoped would be a nice easy case. In a few minutes, I was in front of my client, Jason's house on East 66th Street. It turned out to be a modest little shack of some 30 rooms with a brownstone cover. I was ushered in to wait in the library for Thomas Jason. But I got a surprise. Mr. Diamond? Well, now I'll bet you're Carol. Your stepfather's told me so much about you. You're a friend of my stepfather's? Well, uh, you might say we have things in common. Where is he? I'm afraid you can't see him, Mr. Diamond. You see, he's become quite ill. Oh, ill so quickly? I talked to him a few hours ago. He's about as sickly as Paul Bunyan. Mr. Diamond, will you please leave? Not until you tell me what happened to Jason, where he is and why I can't see him. Get out. Do you hear me? Get out. Oh, put a cork in it, honey. Your father suspected trouble. Apparently, it came quicker than he thought. Me, I want to know all your little secrets. Just who are you? Policeman? Private policeman, dear. Your father hired me this morning. Well, I'm firing you this afternoon. Father's ill and I will not allow him to be disturbed. He paid me for a day's work. Tomorrow you can fire me. Is he here? No. Now, will you get out or do I call the real police? No, oh, maybe you'd better, dear. There's a smell around here that isn't a room full of roses. Oh, all right. If it's going to save trouble, I will tell you this much. Father had a serious mental condition. This afternoon, a couple of hours ago, he had an attack. And I was forced to have him taken to a place where he could be treated properly. With what? Embalming fluid? Why, you insulting. Where was he taken? Who's the doctor? I think I've answered all the questions I need to, Mr. Diamond. My actions are entirely legal. If you persist in your insinuations, I shall see that your license is revoked and that you are charged with defamation of character. Oh, get you. You've been reading up on the law, and I'll bet I know why. All right, dear. I'll leave now. Go on, and don't come back. Temper, temper, temper. I'm going, but we'll see each other again. Uh, hello, Pop. Got a minute? Yeah. You reckon so, Misty? What's on your mind? Oh, questions. Like how long you've been out here mowing the lawn? Yeah, most of the day. Why? Did you uh, see Mr. Jason leave? Oh, well, sure. Left in an ambulance, he did. He was wearing a funny white coat with the arms tied in back. Well, my fashion certainly changed. You didn't notice any name on the ambulance, did you? Well, as a matter of fact, I did, mister. Oh, my, it was a silly name. About the silliest I've ever heard of. Oh, the name, Pop. What was it? Oh, don't be in such a dang rush. It was uh, home, sweet home, rest home. Oh, no. Ain't that silly? I don't think my client agrees with you. If he was taken there for a rest, it may be a permanent one. Next stop, a drugstore with a phone book. Said book gave me the address, and I was soon in Baychester, looking at something pretty swank in the way of nut houses. Home, sweet home was two acres of lawn, trees, and a square white blockhouse and all surrounded by 15 feet of spike steel fencing. By this time, the setup was really beginning to smell, and I decided that maybe a shamus might not be welcome. So for a moment, I stood by the big gate debating how I could get in. The answer was fairly simple. I rang the bell. It caused a huge character wearing a white jacket with arms like hairy telephone poles to appear. 
Yeah? What can I do for you, mister? Now, let me in. Why? This is a rest home, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I want to rest. Oh, funny. Beat it. I want to speak to the doctor, King Kong. Is he in? Maybe, maybe not. Who wants him? I do. Who are you? Ah, uh, let's just say I'm a patient. You going to keep me out here dying of schizophrenia? Dr. Thorne is busy now. Come back later. Look, in one minute I start throwing fits. Think how that'll ruin your trade. Yeah, the doc wouldn't like that. Maybe you had better come in. Now, that's right neighborly of your friend. Wow. Nice place. For nuts. Please. I'm a patient, remember? So, if you're a nut, I should care. If you ain't, why should you? Now, that's a homely bit of philosophy. Tell me, what do you do here? Break skulls? I don't think I like you. And I'm a nurse. What a shock this will be to Dr. Kildare. I don't know him. Now, you wouldn't. His nurses are pretty. If he had to have you as a nurse, he'd quit medicine and take up playing the glockenspiel. Well, you're nuts. Wait here. i get the doctor. Yes, nurse. Dr. Thorne, you got a patient, I think. All right, Brasso. I am Dr. Thorne, sir. What can I do for you? He's nuts, Doc. Be quiet, Brasso. Oh, he's right, Doc. I, I'm nuttier than a squirrel's hideout. Well, I'm afraid I can be of no assistance, uh, Mr... Promise you won't tell? Is I promise? I am Sherlock Holmes. What? H-O-L-M. I can spell... I'm afraid you've come to the wrong place, Mr. Holmes. This is a private sanitarium, and certain procedures must be followed. I have money, I can pay, and I want to stay here. But, Mr. Holmes, you must be examined by a doctor and committed by a relative. You're a doctor? Examine me. But your relative, you, you can't commit yourself. Why not? I demand my rights. Oh, this is preposterous. This is not a hotel. You can't just come in and register. Tell me, you know, who's your doctor? Where is your home? Well, look, look. Tell you what, you let me stay here for the day and I'll tell you who my doctor is. And if you don't let me stay, I'll tell everyone what a bad place you have. Uh, you, uh, you said something about having um, money. Just how much money? I've got a mattress full. Can I stay? Well, perhaps it can be arranged. Though, of course, I must examine you. Of course. And there will be a certain um, fee, you understand? Mm, I'm beginning to. Tell me, Mr... Um, uh, stop! You certainly are most annoying. Tell me, why do you want to stay here anyway? Well, I, I've got to stop the plot. The, the plot? You know about that? Sure. You plan to rub out fearless Fosdick, but I'm not going to let you. Oh, I see. Tell me, do you, uh, do you have any dreams? Well, of course. I have dreams about eating ice cream cones, and oh, what a mess they are. What's so messy about eating an ice cream cone? My mouth is always filled with BBs. BBs? For my air rifle, stupid. How else could I stand off the Indians? Well, what Indians? Well, the Indians who want to steal my ice cream cones. Now, why would Indians want your ice cream cones? Oh, they're mad about pistachio. You are crazy, aren't you? Brazo, take Mr... Um... H-O-L. Oh, never mind. Take him to observation room B, Brazo. I don't have time for... The examination now. Uh, wait, uh, can't I be with the other patients? I get lonely. Later, later. Come on, Sherlock. <laughs> this way. Well, I was in, thanks to the good doctor not being able to pass up a possible easy buck. The big ape Brazo led me to a small room with bars on the window and a spring lock on the door. When he left, I made like a smart gumshoe and went after the lock with my penknife. Due to my early training in picking locks at the automat, I was out like Alabama. I found myself in a long hall with seven rooms, three on each side and one at the end. I knocked on every door. Nothing. Not even Bogart. The last one had to be Jason. Are you in there, Mr. Jason? Diamond. Oh, oh I am glad to hear your voice. Please, get, get me out of here. Now, just take it easy. I don't have a key, and this door has a padlock on it. But you must get me out. Sure, sure, but give me time. First, tell me what's the score. Why did they lock you up? Carol had it planned. 
She has paid Dr. Thorne to keep me here until I go crazy. She wants to have me judged legally insane so she can take the estate. Yeah. Well, maybe I can put a few kinks in her plan. Wait, wait Diamond. Where are you going? Uh, there's a phone in the doctor's office. If no one's there, I'll use it to get help. Yes, but what if you can't get to the phone? And I go out and get the Marines. If I can get by that ape man, that locked gate. Don't go away. Oh, there you are, Sherlock. Oh, don't pick on me. I was only three and a half years old. Yeah, I'm upset with you, Sherlock. You oughtn't to be running around the halls like this. Well, you know? That guy's got to have his constitutional, Brazo. Yeah, well, you're true with yours. The doc wants to examine you now. I, I've, I've changed my mind. I, I don't think I like it I said it here. the doc wants you what the doc wants he gets. Well, bully for him, but this is one time you won't. I'm leaving. I don't want to break your arm, Sherlock. No? So you don't leave until the doc says so. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint him, but certain things are necessary, like this. Oh. Now, you shouldn't act like oh. that. I might get mad. Oh, my knuckles. What is your jaw made of, concrete? Yeah, come on, Sherlock. Or do you want to try again? Uh, no, thanks. One busted hand is enough. And don't try to run. The gate's locked. And if I have to catch you, <laughs> I'll fix your legs so you can't run again. Oh, friendly little butcher, aren't you? Yeah, right in here, Sherlock. The doc is waiting. <laughs> here he is, Doc. Good. <clears throat> you can go back to the office, Brazo. I won't need you. Well... You seem to be well-trained as a detective, Mr. Holmes. Do you always pick locks so easily? I do better with my erector set. Uh, but you needn't examine me further. I've changed my mind. You've changed your... This is odd. First you demand in, now you want out. I just remembered I forgot to pick up my station wagon. But the Indians, you want me to help you keep them from stealing your ice cream cones, don't you? Uh, they already got them, and all my money, too. They're both gone. Your money? Then you don't have any money? Not a bolivar. Now, may I go, Doctor? You're going to stay right here, Mr. Holmes. There's something peculiar about the way you've recovered from your illusions. Uh, Doc, uh, Miss Jason to see you. She's in your office. Very well, Brazo. Stay here and guard this man, whoever he is. Uh, Holmes, age old. Will you shut up? And make sure he stays put this time, Brazo. I have some questions I want to ask him. He won't go in no place, Doc. You go ahead to the office. Well, Carol... This is a pleasant surprise. Come to visit Jason. So, and our plans will have to be changed. Changed? Something has come up that may cause an investigation of stepfather's illness. We can't afford to take a chance of that. But we can't let Jason go now. I had no such intentions. He must be taken care of tonight. Taken care of? But that's impossible. How could I... He must be gotten rid of. What? Oh, no. No, I didn't bargain for murder. Look, Thorne, you're in and you stay in. I've paid you $10,000. Don't forget it. But why all this sudden rush to change our plan? Why can't we A private detective came to see me this morning. He was hired by stepfather. I knew he had suspicions, but I didn't know they'd gone so far. A detective? Oh, he can't act legally, but he's a sort to cause trouble. Detective. Private detective. Sherlock Holmes. He's rambling about. I'm afraid we're in serious trouble. Come with me. What? Your private detective. I think he's already found Jason. Come on. You wouldn't like to earn a hundred bucks, would you, Brazo? No. It is you, Diamond. Uh oh, fun's over. Thorne, you fool. How'd he get in here? He said he was a patient, Carol, and I swear he seemed crazy enough. He probably said he had money. Uh, you seem to understand each other, honey, but do you mind? I'd like to take Mr. Jason home For now. For a couple of extra dollars, you let him walk right in. Oh, Thorne, you're an idiot. I suppose he found Jason and talked to him. Well, he did get out of his room and wander about. Oh, that's great. So now I know the whole works. Uh, too bad, baby. Your plan is kaput. Not quite, Diamond. You've just talked yourself into real trouble. This gun says for you not to get any bright ideas. My IQ just dropped 30 points. Shut him up, Rizzo. Sure. Hey, now, wait a minute. Oh! Now, stay with him while Thorne and I make arrangements. We won't be long. <laughs> Do I get the... Yes, Rizzo, when we're ready. Yeah. Come on, Thorne, I want to talk to Stepfather. <laughs> Brazo's fist was made of the same stuff as his jaw. By the time I came around, darkness had painted the window, and the room was full of shadow and Brazo. The big hulk was squatting a few feet away, paying no attention to me. So I waited till my mind was clear while I eased off my right shoe. The heel was leather with a steel plate in it. I could only hope it was harder than Brazo's skull. With the shoe in my hand behind me, I was ready. Only to have him catch me stirring. <laughs> Coming to, eh, Shamus? Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, hand me my cigarettes, will you, Brazo? You need a smoke, eh? Huh? 
Sure. Uh, where, where are they? Uh, fell out of my pocket uh, over there behind you. Uh, where, where? I don't see you. <laughs> I say, that's not... Need another? <laughs> Stop that. Oh, come on, Buster, fall. <laughs> well, is little old Brazo finally getting sleepy? Happy New Year, Buster. Levinson, homicide. Walt, Rick, if you don't want me to be a customer of yours, get out to the home sweet home rest home fast. What? Hey, what kind of a gag is this now? It's no gag, believe me. My client and I are the blue plate specials and dinner is about to be served. The home sweet... Oh, it still sounds like a gag. Who'd call anything that? Now, don't argue, Walt. It's no joke. Okay, Rick, what's the address? 1820 Allerton Avenue, Baychester. And bring a blowtorch to cut an iron gauge. You may have to. All right, I'll be there in 30 minutes. Uh, quicker, if you can. Stand right there, Diamond. Or I'll use this gun. Uh, good afternoon. I represent the sleep tight like I came just in time. Only now that you've fixed Brazo, you'll have to dig your own grave. Dig my own grave? Oh, honey, is this trip really necessary? Keep moving or I'll kill you right here. I, I move. Keep going. Over there behind those trees where Thorne and Jason are. Well, is Jason... He's alive, but not for long. Where's Brazo? I thought he was going to... Diamond knocked him out. They can dig their own graves. There, the shovels. Get busy. Carol, please, you may have the money. I swear... Shut up and dig. Carol, this is... Just work the shovel. Can you imagine Richard Diamond, private detective, letting a sawed-off female make him dig his own grave? You can't? Well, she did. And for a good half hour. I stalled as long as I could to give Walt Levinson the chance to get there. That's enough. I said that's deep enough. Oh, please, I'm just started. You're finished. Jason, get into that hole with him. Uh, Very well. I I guess this is it, Diamond. I'm sorry to have dragged you in. Well, that's a horrible way to say it. Don't we get time for a last cigarette? No. Thorne, take this gun. What? Oh, no, I'm not going to kill them. Shut up and take this gun. Oh, don't do it, Thorne. Be a man about it. Here, Thorne. Don't be such a weakling. Two shots and it's over. No. It was your idea. I'm no murderer. That a boy. Stick up for your rights. You shut up. Thorne, do you do the job or do I make you number three in that grave? You wouldn't dare. You, you need me. That a boy, Thorne. Tell her. Go on, Thorne. Take the gun. No, I can't. I just can't. Not my like face. You weakling. I'll do it myself. Now, turn around, Diamond. Oh, now, look, baby, this thing's getting out of hand. You shoot me and the law will be all over the place. Not until I've filled that grave in over you. I called them, baby. Oh, you're lying. Am I? Well, just turn around and take a look at that lovely big fat policeman standing over there by that tree. Oh, you really don't expect me to fall for an old stunt like that. Well, if you don't, you'll fall for something. It's your funeral. No, it isn't. It's yours. All right, lady, drop it. What? Why, you... Smarty. I'll kill you anyway. <laughs> Carol. Rick, Rick, what the devil's going on here? What are you doing down there? I'm looking at the girl. I, I think you shot her pretty bad. Who are these two guys? The guy with the cast in that knees is Doc Thorne. Better put the cuffs on him as an accessory. But you can't do this. I was the one that re- refused to shoot you. Oh, stop licking my hand. You can tell it to the precinct judge. Otis, snap the cuffs on him and take him out the car. Sure. Come on, you. Now, what about this other guy? The girl's stepfather. How do you feel, Mr. Jason? Sick, Mr. Diamond. How about the girl, Rick? Shall I call the ambulance? I don't know. Carol. Carol. Well, Rick? Ah, uh, take your time, Walt. She's not with us. I gave Walt the story, then took Jason to his house. Stayed there long enough to brush the dirt off my clothes, wash my hands, and then I headed for a delayed date. At 975 Park Avenue, I found a big fireplace and a lovely redhead waiting for me. A redhead wearing a dress that was part green silk and part... Well... I'm the library, darling. Come on in. Uh, hello, Helen, baby. You sound like you found oil in the basement. What's with the cheer? Me? Isn't it always? I like you. Hmm, I like the way you say that. Looking up at me with those big green eyes. They're not green. They're hazel. Oh, are they? Hmm... 
Let me look closer. Uh, not until you sing for me. Sing? Oh, honey, I'm tired. I want to rest. No, you don't. No, over to the piano. No, Rick, not here. But, Helen, all I wanted to do was... I know, Rick. Oh, you've been using that Ouija board again. I don't want to sing. Now, look at my eyes. Close range? Contact. I'll sing. That's better. Like, uh, you must have been a beautiful baby. I oh, love it. You must have been a beautiful baby. You must have been a wonderful child when you were only starting to go to kindergarten. I bet you drove the little boys wild. And when it came to winning blue ribbons, you must have shown the other kids how. I can see the judge's eyes as they handed you the prize, I bet you made the cutest bow. Oh, you must have been a beautiful baby. Cause, baby, look at you now. Like that? That was wonderful, Rick. Come here. Mm, about time. Mm. Oh, Rick. Do you think you can do that and sing, too? Honey, when you look at me like that, I could kiss you, sing, and knit a whole sweater at the same time. Rick, could you? Want to try? A sweater will take years. I'll buy that. Come here, we'll start with the neck. Rick. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. You know something? Mm, what? I may even knit you a whole suit. You have just heard Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Helen was played by Virginia Gregg, Lieutenant Levinson by Ed Begley. Also in our cast were Wilms Herbert, High Averback, Betty Moran, Howard McNear, Edwin Max, and Jay Novello. Music was under the direction of Frank Worth. Tonight's story was written by Herb Purdom and edited and directed by Blake Edwards. Portions were transcribed. Dick Powell soon will be seen in the screen version of the best-selling novel, Mrs. Mike. <laughs> Now, this is Eddie King inviting you to be with us again at the same time next week when we will again bring you Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. How much is your life worth? Think about that for a minute. Is it worth a little care? Well, that's all that's needed to protect it on America's streets and highways. Only your careful driving and your acceptance of personal responsibility for your own life can guard you from the dangers of the road. The price that you may pay for carelessness is a high one, and it's a price that thousands upon thousands of accident victims have already paid. Their gamble with death behind the wheel is a stark warning, a warning that an accident can happen to you. Last year alone, some 32,000 persons were killed in traffic accidents, and well over a million others were injured. Smash-ups have averaged more than one a minute, every minute of the day and night. These are the facts of traffic dangers. As for the facts of traffic safety, well, they all boil down to just two facts. Careful driving by automobile owners, careful walking by pedestrians. So drive carefully, walk carefully. The care you take may save a life, and that life may be your own. Saturday night is packed with entertainment when you stay tuned to NBC's star lineup of shows. Each Saturday, make it a point to listen to NBC. You'll hear Hollywood Star Theater, Ralph Edwards' Truth or Consequences, Your Hit Parade, A Day in the Life of Dennis Day, The Judy Canova Show, Grand Old Opry, and Songs by Morton Downey. Now, stay tuned for Lionel Barrymore and Hollywood Star Theater on NBC. NBC.